Did that give you guys mesh? Yeah. <laughs> and then we're just What's scratching. Mesh? Oh, this that's mesh. a really good idea. And you just go like that and then it scrapes off all of it. That's awesome. Mom, remember yeah, you gotta be careful not to sand the whole brick down. Because the whole brick will sand to nothing if you are going too far. Ah, Alex, do <laughs> We'll go ahead and bring Daddy the clean bricks and then go get more dirty bricks. Um, that one? That okay, one. Alex. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> bring Daddy the clean ones and then go get more dirty okay. ones. Awesome. Oh, Thank good. you, guys. Thanks, Alex. You did a good job. That's a really good method. Yeah. Very uh, thorough. Thanks, Alex. That's why you just... Instead of just buying a sanding block, you can just buy that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want water yet, Daddy? What? Because it's going. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, can you pull up my gloves? And pull up the gloves or your sleeves? My gloves. Hmm. Yeah, these aren't meant for his size hands. I don't know. Am I touching it? <laughs> Here's our chasm that is no longer heating the house. Ah! Tomorrow's the last day of the uh, winter warm spell. And <laughs> we're hoping to get it done uh, as soon as possible. The sunroom has been an amazing source of heat in the daytime. And then in the evening, we just cuddle up and go to bed early. <laughs> Hasn't been too bad, actually. No, the, the rocket stove in the back of the house actually is very effective. So we fire that up and the house is toasty. Yeah. Toasty roasty. Toasty roasty. And girls are drawing mermaids. We're coloring mermaids. Gonna measure it again. <laughs> So on Saturday, we saw on the weather that it was going to be five or six days of really warm, like 50 degrees, which is a big deal of warm here. And so we decided to de deconstruct our previous fireplace, and it took a lot longer to deconstruct than we thought, because we were trying not to bro break all the bricks. We've been researching it for a long time, but we practiced a dry run. We built it in front of the computer table as we were looking at the slideshow, and we thought, we can do this. We built that in like half an hour. Yeah. And so then we tried to do the real thing. It did not take half an hour. <laughs> we finally put the top on, the glass um, cook stove top, at 9 p.m. And we started breaking this down at what, 12? Yeah. So that was an insane day. But we got it made and we were all like, woohoo, let's go to bed. And then the next day we tried to fire it up and it smoked back because we had forgotten to make the bypass. So if you look at the designs on Walker Wood stoves, he has a bypass and that is how he gets hit, hit, it to rock it really fast right away. And we did not do that. So now we are re-evaluating what to do because it didn't actually fit. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is that it didn't fit what we already had here. Otherwise, it would, there would have been plenty of room for that bypass. So yeah, we found out that we um, had built it in the wrong uh, direction. And so now we're going to try and fit it to the orientation of the normal stove. It was lengthwise instead of widthwise. And we're hoping to get it done tonight and have a bypass. <laughs> Love you, sweetie. You want me to get the banana open for you? Ready? This is Emmy's favorite food. She can feed it to herself, and it's mostly sugar. Nature's candy bar. A banana. <laughs> I know. Kind of it's like a Nana candy bar? Yes. Hi, <laughs> 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 Banjo. Some dirt still on it. <laughs> it needs to be level. It doesn't have to be, as long as it's not bumpy. It doesn't have to be all white. Did you just lock us in? 
Here we have the core. Almost to the second level. It's coming up really nice now that the kids sanded those bricks. Yeah, I need to watch it. Yeah. So I've made three different levels here in this rocket nest heater core. And there's, I don't know, 20 feet or so of area for this the fire and the flue gases to, to go around and to Full combustion. Burned. Yeah, full combustion of all the gases, all the smoke. So that's what we were going for, is a serpentine, a long length, just um, you know, condensed in this tiny spiral, basically. That's what this core is. And then it um, releases all of its energy through the cooktop, hopefully. Most. <laughs> that's the plan. We, we want some of it to go on the bench. Yeah, so, yeah, so most of it, yeah, good point. And it, it'll, uh, so heat up from over here, so that'll be the hottest one, next hottest, etc. That's the coolest one, and it'll come out here There'll be a bypass, actually just a, a sheet of metal. It'll go down in this little box that I'm going to build out of um, brick. We'll see. Maybe it'll be metal. I'll try brick first. Anyway, a piece of metal will go down here. And so it'll be closed, open. So when it's open, the, the hot air can just go straight up the chimney. And that'll create a really strong draft. And once this heats up, and you know the fire is going really well. We'll close It'll that. Create a nice draw to drag it through the serpentine. Mm -hmm. and it'll go down through the whole system, heat up the bench, and end up and out. Uh, um, business. Uh, um, business. Uh, um, business. Mary dress. And Princess Mary dress. Okay. So why is it worth all this just to heat our house when we could just get a forced air system going or any kind of propane or normal gas stove? That's a good question. Or even just a normal wood stove. Why go through this painstaking effort fills our house with ashes and crunchy bricks? <laughs> Is that rhetorical or are you asking No, I, I think people are going to be like, why? Why not just build a regular stove? Well, what a waste of time. And they'll see us and think, oh, that's a good example of what not to do. Right. Well, I guess the obvious one is that we... Okay, so here's an example. We've got a, a dear friend of ours who lives a mile away. He lives in a... It, it just happens to be a much smaller house than ours. He goes through eight cords of wood per year, and he still um, has trouble with keeping his house warm at his night. House warm. Granted, um, you know we're we're constantly adding insulation to the house, so that's that's a big deal. That helps a lot. But um, we're only using one and at max, I'd say one and a half cords. Um, maybe one and a quarter is, is more normal for us in a typical winter. This year we've actually used less because it's been a warm winter. But um, yeah, so one and a quarter cords on average for a 4,000 square foot house versus um, eight cords for, I'm guessing, about a 2,000 square foot house. And we actually have two stoves. We don't run both all year. We variegate between the two, but still less wood for two stoves. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. So that, that's really, really typical of a rocket mass heater of this type. It's because with a regular fireplace or a wood stove, most of the heat just goes up and out into the atmosphere. Right out the chimney. Yeah. Keeping all the birds warm. <laughs> keeping, keeping the neighborhood full of smoke too. I like the smell of smoke actually, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'd rather burn it and have it heat our house. So that's the reason for all this work. <laughs> I think it's worth it. I think so too. really fun to get my hands dirty. Uh, we actually do enjoy this kind of work. I mean, not, okay. <laughs> there's some high anxiety involved part, in part of it, and there's, uh, there's a lot of dust. We don't really enjoy the dust, but I enjoy hands-on projects. We're both artists, and we're both hands-on. Uh, we like getting ourselves involved. <laughs> we're definitely involved. We're so involved. <laughs> No doubt. So we were just thinking, if this ever breaks, we're probably going to end up getting a piece of wrought iron, right? Just steel, just plate steel is what I was thinking. 
something um, thick enough to really... I want to be able to fry hash browns right on here. It'd be like the like camping diner. stove. Or in a diner, you know, flipping, flipping burgers. That yeah, kind of thing. like five um, burgers. It's always just steel. <laughs> awesome. So we'll do a nice brick surround. And then up here, we're going to build it higher and I'll be able to hang my ladles and spoons and um yeah so we'll go up are we thinking arched or just mm, I want it to be arched. like a mantelpiece so on your side it'd be where we hang the stockings okay the stockings so yeah. just a nice big piece of wood real thick. yeah and I was thinking that is a pipe sorry um, my fault <laughs> that's what I get for watching through the camera <laughs> on this side um, I was thinking it'd be cool to have some diagonal bricks holding up, or like dental molding, but use bricks as the dental molding. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I want to get nice and fancy, fancy yeah. hobbit, hobbitize it, make it look craftsman. Nice and comfortable, not too rustic. Yeah, or the Weasley's cottage from Harry Potter. Something between those two. Craftsman, More, uh, but with a rustic flair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty descriptive of our style. <laughs> we should draw more Mom. in the videos. Yeah. We draw all the time, otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Mom. Mom. Hi, girls. Get your uh, yours princess dress. Yes. Okay, I, I forgot. I will go do it now. Okay. Emmy doesn't want to wear it. She's just being a princess. Are you a princess? A pink Not princess? Like from Doctor Who. Are you in Doctor Who, Emmy? Are you Donna?